by being a um, hospice volunteer, I think I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of patients. I know what to expect. And uh, it, um, I think, makes life more valuable for me. My name is Marcia Meyer, I'm 57 and I am a bookkeeper. Hi, my name is Josh Costa. I volunteer with the uh, administrative staff as well as with palliative patients. I spend time with them. My name is Adele Gould, I'm 66 years old and I'm a social worker but currently retired. My name is Eleanor Herger. I am 81 years of age and my occupation, well I'm retired. I used to be a registered nurse. Um, I've always been interested in palliative care, even as a young person when I was training to be a social worker. I had a four-year-old grandchild who passed away five years ago. Um, she had a very uh, rare and aggressive form of brain cancer and was very, very ill for about ten months. It was a very, very painful time in our lives. Um, but we were helped enormously by Hospice Sonda at the time and I was so inspired by the compassion and the caring and the support that we got from them that I felt it was time for me to begin thinking about volunteering. A friend of a friend recommended that I attend the course, Core Ken's Concept, and, uh, which I did. I enjoyed it and then I just became a member of the Hospice Thornhill. For many years when I was attending Thornhill Festival, I would um, see the booth that Hospice Thornhill had there. and. Um, just kind of felt maybe a little tugged towards that, not that I knew a whole lot about the hospice industry. Then one year I actually stopped and looked at it, picked up a pamphlet, talked to some ladies that were manning the booth, and um, assured them that someday, when I had time, that I would really like to do that. And I kind of put the pamphlet away and was, yeah, trying to find time when you're a busy person is easier said than done. So it went by the wayside probably for a good two years after that. And then one day I was working out at Curves for women and um, the lady next to me was just um, starting conversation and asked me what I did for a living. And uh, afterwards I asked her why she wanted to know that. And she said because she was running a day program at Hospice Thornhill um, that people could come to on Tuesdays and described to me what that was and said that they were always looking for people who had um, interesting careers or hobbies or whatever to come and, and give little talks. So she and I both agreed that bookkeeping was not very interesting <laughs> for me to come and give a talk on. However, I did tell her that for a very long time I had been thinking about helping at Hospice Thornhill. So she invited me to come to a day program and just sit and have coffee with the, the folks there and see what I thought about that. So I did come, I think, the very next week to the day program and totally fell in love with those sweet people that were coming on Tuesdays. And I've been here ever since. So from there I went to the core concepts training that is necessary to be a volunteer and had the privilege of having all of that training absolutely free of charge to me and um, learned more in depth um, what there was that really needed to be done in the hospice. With the patients, I generally go over to their place and spend time with them. I'll talk, uh, we'll talk about like what's going on in their life or if they need any uh, assistance with groceries. Sometimes we go out and do grocery shopping and it's just a great opportunity to really connect with people. I am also here assisting with the administrative staff and um, whatever really they need, sometimes I'll do um, filing, patient filing or uh, just analyzing Excel sheets. So it's, it's always stimulating, challenging. It's, it, it's never a boring job. I visit clients, depending upon their uh, physical condition. Sometimes we just sit and talk. Sometimes we go shopping. Very infrequent, I will, if they wish to, they want me to read something to them. Uh, 
sometimes I just sit and watch television because that is what the client is doing. Now that may not be always be my uh, favorite thing to do since I don't often like the program. But you have to be tolerant, you have to just more or less be there for what the client wants and uh, sort of make the client forget for a little bit the trouble they are in, the physical trouble. I've been volunteering for about five years and um, I first came to uh, help out at the day program, just sitting and having uh, coffee and chatting with people. And then because I'm a bookkeeper, it came to light that there was some administration needed on the bookkeeping level in the office, so I was also helping do some of that. And then um, we realized that there were no people on the board who weren't corporate, nobody who had worked with clients before. So we thought that it would be helpful if someone like myself came on the board to kind of bring a volunteer voice as well as some experiences that we go through with clients so that the board can understand sort of why we do some of the things that we do. So going back to your question about um, what, what my volunteer work is about, so it started off being one to one. I also started doing um, driving clients to, to, to appointments, which was really important because I found it was a great bonding experience. We, we were in the car together. I would stay with the client if possible when she was having chemotherapy. And drive her back again, and it was, it was really important time for us to talk. Um, so there was a one to one. The one to one evolved into the legacy letters of photography, and now our primary focus at the moment is the legacy letters because at the moment I'm the only person doing it, and certainly uh, it's my intention to help train other volunteers because it's not difficult, it's just a question of knowing a few things about it. Another lady I've had, a client who was elderly and she had, could not walk too well. She uh, was actually very, very sweet in temperament, very, very uh, patient just getting into the elevator, getting into the car. It was not easy, not easy for her. And then we went shopping. With the um, problem of mobility she had, it took her two hours to shop. She didn't need much, most of what she bought. But she enjoyed it so much that she looked towards it from week to week. I haven't spoken to her for some time. I hope she's all right. But and she hoped that, and I hope that she still goes shopping, maybe with her family. A very um, excited feeling about a time this past summer that I got to spend with one of our uh, elderly ladies who had to go to hospital, and um, she had called her son to come and take her to hospital. She hates hospitals, she didn't want to go, but she knew that something was wrong and that she needed care and she needed it right away. So it just so happened that I called her that morning to see how she was doing and to see if she wanted a visit. And um, I could tell by the tone of her voice that something was very wrong. And because she lives close to me, about a five minute drive, I got right in the car and went right over and um, stayed with her in the apartment until her son could come, which was a good half hour until he got there. Um, during when she was very, very distressed and hyperventilating because she was so worried. And so it was wonderful to be able to sit with her during that time. And then when the son got there, he was equally distressed, and so I went with them to the hospital and stayed there for the day with them while um, they were being processed and emerged and the nurses were trying to explain what was going on. And it was a very traumatic time for them, and I was delighted just, just to be there as a buffer with all of the... Um, shock and everything that they were going through and my own mother lives uh, two hours away and I just kept thinking the whole time um, if this ever happened to my mom um, I would want to think that there was somebody in her community that would care enough for her to do this and so um, it was just delightful to be able to spend that time doing that so that's probably my highlight. So volunteering with hospice actually allows you to make a difference in people's lives and and that is that is a great experience. I think the one experience that stands out for me was with my, I think it was my first client, the one that I followed for two years, this remarkable woman who just had such an amazingly positive attitude, um, just determined to keep going, determined to have fun no matter what she was going through. And what stands out for me is the day that she asked me to bring a tape recorder with me so she could dictate a, letter to, a legacy letter to her daughter and, and her grandchildren. And she's, we both sat on, or well, she was in bed and I was sitting on her bed, and we both sat and sobbed while she was doing this. I and mean, it was just, it made it so real for me 
um, as nothing else could have done, and it really stands out in my mind as, as being something. It just, just left such an impression on me, and it was, it was a concept was special. It was just important. If you're interested in working with um, palliative clients, it's the one thing I would have to say is to keep an open mind. Uh, don't go, don't be scared when talking to these people. They're they're just like us. They they're still alive and they they want to make the most of it. So just just be yourself and talk to them, and and it will be great. So I'd say after the years that I have volunteered here so far, I've learned two very important things. The first one is that I always feel like I've got more out of the situation than the person that I was serving. I, I'm just sure of that. And talking to other volunteers, I think that's true. The second thing is that you don't actually have to be a specialist in the field that you're volunteering in. And in the hospice industry, it's the medical field. You don't have to be a specialist and what the person is going through um, with their meds and with their um, how they're progressing in the disease if you have a compassionate heart and you want to bring comfort and peace and hope to a person um, it's really very easy you just need to open up your heart and to learn how to love the other person and um, I love doing that. I have learned so much from the people that I meet with I've learned that people facing terminal illness find strength that they never knew they had. They find courage that they never knew they had. And that's encouraging for me as a person with Parkinson's and sort of feeling that one day I'm going to face that at some point in time and I, and I believe that I too will develop strength that I don't know I have. Um, the other thing that strikes me is, is the determination of, of the human psyche to, to, um, to survive longer, as long as possible no matter what the suffering may be. It's quite, quite amazing to see that people want to go on no matter what they're going through. Um, and the other thing is, is, I think what I've learned is that people find peace at some point in time. They do make peace with the fact that they're going to die. And um, again, that for, for me, it's, it, 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 it's a learning experience for me, both in terms of working with clients and in terms of my own um, future. I mean, I'm young. I, I've had Parkinson's for a long time. Hopefully I've got another 25 years ahead of me. But it's really inspiring and, and encouraging for me to see that people do cope, they do have strength, they do have courage, and they do want to live as long as possible, and they do find peace. And aside from how much I learn from clients, um, volunteering at hospice gives me a tremendous sense of purpose. Um, it helps me use my skills, it helps me hone my skills, it, keep, it helps me keep my skills as a social worker. It stimulates my, my, my brain, which Parkinson's seems to want to attack from time to time, but it, it, it gives me a lot of stimulation, it makes me think, it makes me, um, um, it, it uses my brain a lot I guess, um, and also um, it makes me focus on things other than myself. It's very, very humbling to work with people who are facing death. And I want to say one more thing, and that is there's no question that I, I get much more than I give. Well, generally individuals um, who, are, who are clients at a hospice are in a vulnerable situation, so interacting with uh, these, this population could sometimes be um, a little difficult, but as I've worked with these people, it's, it's allowed me to become comfortable talking to them and interacting, and because of that, I've grown as a person. After having been with hospice for, I think, about five or six years, one thing I've learned is that uh, we need to, we have to look forward to some very, everybody has to look forward towards something that is not particularly pleasant. By being a um, hospice volunteer, I think I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of patients. I know what to expect. And uh, it, uh, I think, makes life more valuable for me.